Have a seat. Good afternoon. Can you uh, introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Anwan Carter. And uh, how old are you, Anwan? 22. Where do you live these days? Florida Beagles. And were you here in town in 2016? Yes, sir. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing. I understand if you could just speak this a little bit louder. And that's, may I approach your honor? You may, yeah, you want to move the microphone. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. So, you know what we're, you know what we're here uh, to discuss. Let's talk a little bit about how you, how you know different people uh, here. How do you know Chikori? Good. And were you all very close? Yes. What sorts of things would you do with Chikori when you were here? Hang out. We just go, go find different females to hang out with. Anything else you all do together? I'm sorry, you got to speak up so they can hear you. We used to hang out, we used to hang out, we used to smoke, we used to... I still basketball. can't hear you, and if I can't hear you, no one else can. We used to we used to play sports, we used to find different females to hook up with. And did you all grow up together? Did you know him for a long time? Yes. And what, what was his life like? Yeah. He was homeless for a while. And so, as a result of his homelessness, how would he, how would he get by? What, what sorts of things would he do? Yeah, we, used to, we used to steal out of people's cars, sleep over at a friend's house. And what about you? Did you have people to live with here in town? Yes. So, how old were you in 2016? 15. When you were 15, do you remember how much you weighed or how tall you were? I was about 120, 120 pounds. So, how did you meet? Uh, how did you meet Larry? At school. And did you meet Maurice at school as well? Yes. And did you become? What was your relationship with them? Yeah, we're the same as Corey. We used to. We used to Go, go link up with different females. We used to hang out. Was there anybody in town that you were closer to than the three of them? No. Nope. And how did you, do you recognize Mr. Rhodes in the courtroom? Yes. And what did he go by as far as you know? Rambo. And how did you meet Rambo? Morris and Larry. And before we get to... Judge, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that response. Can you repeat that, please? To Maurice and Larry. How long, when we get into May of 2016, how long had you known Rambo Ford? A couple weeks, two, three weeks, a month. So, how many times... How many times had you met him uh, before the night of the first shooting? Mm. I don't know. A couple. So tell, uh, tell the jury, how did the idea of a, of a shooting happen? We was in the we was in my backyard. We saw smoking. And I'm going to slow you down a little bit. Who's we? Me, Corey, him, Maurice and Larry. Okay. And what happened? I was smoking. He, he said that somebody got some money in their head and we just need a gun. That's what Bryce said? We need a gun. And just to spell it out, what does that mean? They have a price on their head and we just need a gun. Somebody, somebody, we get paid to kill somebody. We just need the gun. Now, at this time, do you know approximately how old Rambo was? 
Was he older than you guys? Yeah, he's way older than us. I'm sorry? He's way older than us. Yeah. Was he bigger than you all? Yes. Was he the one that was coming up with the ideas? Yeah. So, how old Judge were... Objection. That calls for speculation. I'll allow it. It's overruled. How old were Maurice and Larry then? Do you know? Like 15. Around my age. Okay. So when he first proposes this idea to you all, do you think he was serious? Mm -hmm. When... When did you decide that he was serious? The night we actually did it. Okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. When what? The night we actually did it. Thank you. So, uh, how was how was a gun acquired? Corey bought the gun. And when Corey bought the gun, did he know what the perp? Did everybody know what the purpose for the gun was, or was it's just a coincidence. Everybody knew what it was for. All right. Had you ever done anything like this before? Mm -hmm. Were you nervous about it? What, what was your What was your feeling about these? I wish I wanted to get paid, yeah, but then yeah. I'm on the fence. It could have went, went either way, either way. At that time, what did you think would have happened if you would have backed out? Did you think about that? Okay. So, uh, Judge, did, uh, was there a, a response to that question? Uh, you nodded your head no, correct? So, let's get to the, uh, the, the day in May. You all get together. Uh, you, how did how did you first get in touch with the group that day? We had see like me and Corey. He had went over to his grandmother's house. While my Maurice Larry, they was at home. So then when we was gonna get dropped back off over Maurice Larry's house, they was already gone. Okay, who? How did you get around in those days? Yeah. We used to walk, we used to catch rides, people just drop us off, our bikes, everything. And did, uh, at that time, did Rambo have a car? Yeah. Did you have a car? I didn't have my car, I didn't have a car of my own. So, who was it that drove you around that night? Q. Q. And how do you know Q? Q, Q's Corey cousin. So, so there's, and we're talking about two incidents, so it, it's easy to get confused. Um, talking about the first incident, you, there was a night where you had a, a truck, the, yeah. the night of the of the hit, right? Yes, yeah. I, I, had stole, I had stole the truck. And that was, was that in order to carry this out or that's, you were just driving a stolen truck? Yeah, I just had a stolen truck. Okay. So, what was the, what was the plan for that night? That night, we were supposed to, like, we was in the backyard again. And you feel me, we, had, we all linked up. And you feel me, we had went from, but we went from the south to the west. Anything. And how did you all know where to go? I was just I was just following behind. Okay, so you're following a car. What's the car that you're following? It's a light blue Mazda, I think. Okay, and who was in that car? Larry, Maurice, Bryce, and uh, Corey. And where was everybody seated in the car? So Maurice is driving. Larry in the passenger seat. Bryce in the um in the in the in the behind Maurice and Corey on the other side. And who had the gun? Bryce. And who knew who the target was? Judge speculate. Also Bryce. speculation. Judge. Um, I, I'm going to sustain that. 
how did you all know where to go? I was just following behind. <coughs> so, how long did you all drive around? About 30, 45 minutes. And what, did anything eventful happen during that time? So, besides murder. Besides what? Besides murder. Besides somebody getting shot. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're driving along, it, the car in front of you stops around 41st Street. Something like that. Stops somewhere in that area. Can we approach? Sure. Does the car in front of you stop? Yeah, it's not. It's not, it's not the end of the block. And what happens? I heard Sarah's my say, you got the street, bitch. And I'm sorry, but we got to have you enunciate clearly so everybody can hear. What, what was it that happened? Yeah, I heard somebody say, you got the street, bitch. And the shot went off. Who was the somebody that said that? Bryce. Could you see Bryce at that time? I didn't see him, but I know he was positioned it. Sorry, please repeat. I didn't see him, but I know where he was positioned it. And you heard or saw the gun go off? I saw it. Was it inside of the car or outside of the car? That's like, his arm was dangling. Out the car. And... Who was he shooting at? Somebody in the street. Had you ever seen that person before? No. Did you know anything about that person? No. Did that person talk or engage anybody? I know of. Was he facing the car or facing away from the car? Facing the car. And after the gunshot, what happened? She repaired off. Then we, get, we had like five to eight houses down. And he shot, he shot at somebody else. See, he, he shot the gun more? Yeah. And did, what did you do? Just driving. You just continued to follow? And where did you go that night? Just went, back, went back to Maurice and Larry's house. Was everybody at Maurice and Larry's? Mm -hmm. What did you all talk about? Do people talk about the shooting? Mm -hmm. No. Why not? That ain't how I talk. talk. That ain't how I get my problems up. That ain't how I express my problems. So you don't talk about stuff like that after it happens? Just let it go. Why do you not talk about it? Just let it, just let it go. Just. Did you expect to get something as a result of participating in this? Yeah, I wanted some money. And how was that supposed to happen? So you were supposed to break us off. And who was supposed to break it off? Right. How was that going to happen? Mm -hmm. We didn't get that far. I just think he's supposed to break us off. He's supposed to get the gun. He's supposed to break us off. And. When you say break us off, you mean share the share, share the, the money. Share the money. Come on up. So did he give anybody 
did he end up giving anybody any money as a result of that? And how do people feel about that? How did you feel about that? You didn't care that you didn't get paid? I didn't think he got paid. So. Did, were other people upset about not getting paid? Uh, if you know, you can answer that. I don't know. Okay. What did you end up doing with your... Did you do anything with your uh, truck that night? We burned it. And why did you burn it? He, he said in case it was on, like, camera or something. And who's he? Right. And so how did you burn the truck? We put gas in it. Then we'll fire. Were you ever around? There was a there was a phone call that you overheard between the boy's mom and the defendant, right? Yes. You remember that? Yeah. And you could hear. What could you hear? Where were you? So it was over. It was over. Objection here, sir. What was the question? I'm asking where he was when he overheard the phone. Call. What did you overhear? Okay, Go don't ahead. say what somebody else said. If you want to re-ask the question. Um, who was who was talking on the phone? So it was it was it was Larry, it was Larry and Murray's mom. And Bryce. It was who and Bryce? Larry and Maurice's mom. Larry and Maurice's mother? Okay, thank you. And what was the tone of the conversation? It was, it was, about, the, it was about the shooting. And when did this conversation happen? Uh, whenever, whenever, whenever Maurice had told, Maurice had told her. About it. Was she angry? Objection. You don't want to come up? All right, so now let's jump forward to the night that you were talking about um, on the, the 24th. Uh, so on the 21st, late night, um, How were you traveling around that night? You, the truck's been burnt. How were you traveling around? Uh, so getting dropped off. Okay. And so who was dropping you off? And so, on the 21st? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. Earlier, when we were confused about which night we were talking about, you said that she was driving you around? Yeah. Okay. 
So that's the night that we're talking about. Okay, yeah, Q dropping you off. Okay. So Q is dropping you off. Who's with you? So me and Corey. Okay. And where does Q drop you off tonight? Drops off over at his house. At Bryce Rhodes' house. Had you been anywhere together before his house? No. Where'd you go to? So we went over, first went over, went over Maurice and Larry's house. It was already gone. How did you know they were gone? So we, we walked in the house. And they it was already gone. They weren't there. So we called them. Okay. So where'd you guys get dropped off at? Over, 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 over his house. Over at his house? Had you been to his house before? Yeah. Who else? What, what time of day or night is it? It's nighttime. Nighttime? Who's at the house? It's what? Larry, Maurice, me, Corey, uh, him, and like three other people. All right. Who are the Who are the other folks that are there? I don't know, Tyron. Okay. I don't know. Had you, you've explained the people that you know that were there. Had you met Tyron before? Not for that night. Just then. And there was another person there that you didn't know? No. And you don't know who they are now? Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. So, tell me. What was going on that night? So we was all smoking, drinking. And, and you feel me? Larry and Maurice got into an argument. Not Larry and Maurice, but Larry and Corey got into an argument. Was it common for people to get into arguments when you all were hanging out? Yeah. And what happened with this argument? So Maurice grabbed a knife. Okay. So Maurice picked up a knife. Did he wave it at Corey? Yeah, I can see he waved at him. He picked it up in an aggressive, in aggressive manner. And what happened next? So we, so we take it from, take it from, and you smack him. You say he? Do you mean Bryce Rhodes? Bryce, Bryce took it from, and you smack him. How did he take a knife from him? Because he went, he went to do that with the knife anyways. And what? Can you describe the knife? So it, was, it was like a, a big combat knife. And what did Bryce do after he took the knife? He's like, he's going to violate him. Okay. Bryce is going to violate Maurice. And can you explain in general terms, what does it mean to, to violate somebody? What's that term mean? What it means is like, fit. Inflict pain, like he could have just hit him in the chest. He could have did a range of, a range of things. It's like a disciplining of the person? No. Yeah. So, was... Did that, uh, did that alarm Maurice? How did Maurice respond? Yeah. He, he was going to go with it. He thought it was just going to be a, a punch in the chest. And why would he go along with it? That's his, his big homie. I'm sorry? That's his big homie. Oh. So is there a time where you... I, I just want to make sure I'm honest. Did you say because he's Maybe big? Approach? Yes. All right. So, is there a is there a time where people in the house separate from Maurice? Yeah, we we put they put we put both of them in the bathroom and we took a vote. Both both who? Larry and Maurice. Okay. They're in the bathroom, 
And where are you guys? The living room. And what happens in the living room? Should we take a vote. What's this vote on? Check if they should die or not. If they should die or not? Who's calling the vote? Surprise. What was your vote? I'm the one who said no. Everybody else said yeah. And did your vote win? Hmm? Did your vote win? Did you think about what would have happened to you if you tried to leave at that point in time? I ain't had nowhere to go. If they say you live too far up. So what happens after the vote's taken? Where what happens to Maurice? He put a, he put a sock in his mouth, tied his hands behind his back, and put a, and put a hat over his head. And where did he do this? In the living room. And what happened after that? He started hitting me in the chest at first. With with an item? With his fist? How was he hitting him? He was hitting him in the chest with a fist first, then like three, four times. And then, and then Tyron passed him the knife. And he started stabbing him. So Tyrion handed him the knife? Was he, uh, was he making a noise? He couldn't. He had the sock in his mouth. Was he trying to make noise? Yeah. How many times did Bryce Road stab him? I don't know. Where did he stab him? The torso out the pit. Was he standing up or was he on his knees? How... He was on his knees. And he stabbed him in the chest? Chest, stomach. In the, in the gym area. In the what area? In his chest, in his stomach, on his, on his torso. He stabbed him other places? I don't know. How long, how long did this go on for? Until he stopped, until he stopped breathing. Do you have any idea the time? I don't know. Was there a lot of blood? Yeah. Where where was the blood going? In the carpet. Carpet and sheets. There were were the sheets set out to catch the blood? Yeah. Sheets was really there to move them. Who got the sheets? Price. And where did he put them? Like we had dragged Maurice by the door, and then him, Larry, bring Larry out. Now these guys are your best friends, right? Yeah. What are you? What's running through your mind? Make sure I get out. What's that? Just gotta make sure I get out. Try to save somebody else. Make sure I'm safe. And what would have stopped you from getting out? Probably five, 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 five. I didn't go along with it. What would have happened? Probably been with him. Probably been in the same situation, same fate. All right. So they bring Larry out of the bathroom. Does he have? When does? When does he get the sock? He already been like. He had the what he had the belt, he had a hat, he got he got the sock. He had the sock when he was when it was his turn. Okay, when you say he had the belt, what do you mean? His hands was already tied on his back. He had a hat over his eyes, so he couldn't see. And he had a sock in his mouth? He got the sock when it was, when it was his turn. Was he making noises? Not much yet. He he started making noises when he started getting stabbed. Was he on his knees? Yeah. Did he know what had happened to his brother? No. Was he, was there blood in the spot that he was at? Yeah. Did he respond to that? Yeah, he started like trying to kick everything off, get his hands untied, get his hands free and stuff. Was his brother making any noise at that point? My brother already did. 
So how many times did he get stabbed? I don't know. A lot. Who was stabbing him? He stabbed him until he was dead. Bryce did? Yeah. Did he pass the knife around? Who did he pass the knife to? He passed it to me. Why'd he pass you the knife? They're both dead, right? Yeah, they're both dead, but we all, he said, so we, we all going to be in it. So, so now they're both gone. So you, so you would participate? Yeah. So, so what did you have to do with the knife? I stab him. Who'd you stab? Larry. How many times did you stab Larry? Like three. What'd you do with the knife? She passed it back to him. What'd he do with the knife? She passed it to somebody else. Who was the next person up? I don't remember. Where was Jacory? Jacory was right there with him. Jacory was in there. Was Jacory handed the knife? No. Yeah. Before or after they were both dead? After. Do you know what he did with the knife? He stabbed, he stabbed him a few times. Who did he stab? Larry. All right. What's the next? What's the next thing that happens? We put him in, in the totes. If we took him, and like with him, Rice, Tyrant, and somebody else, they, they they were supposed to take him to like a abandoned house and burn up and burn the bundle. The three older guys were. Yeah, they were supposed to take it to a abandoned house and burn it. And when you say totes, what? Most people know, but what's a tote? A little, little thing that you put clothes in. Like a suitcase? No, not no suitcase. It's like a... Uh... Like little things that you put the, the uh... Like Christmas stuff in. Like a bin? Yeah, a bin. So, uh... Their bodies got put in a bin. The plan is the three of them are going to go get rid of the bodies. Do you help carry the bin? How did the bins get down? We all helped take it to the car. And which car was it you took them to? To, to the Sky Blue Mazda. And did you help load the bins into the, into the car? Yeah. Did you see the inside of the car? Yeah. Do you remember, um, was, there a, was it a normal looking car? It was a regular car. <clears throat> so the three of them are going to go do this. What are what are you and your cousin supposed to do? Stay back, clean the blood up. Scrape the, the blood out of the car. And how was it decided that that's what the two of you were going to do? There wasn't no room in the car. Did someone tell you to do that? Yeah. So they left. You're in the. You're up in. Uh, his living room. Did you think about leaving? No. Why? Because I, I knew he was going to drop us off eventually. So, what was the process for cleaning up? We had some bleach. We were just scrubbing the floor. What were you scrubbing the floor with? Rags. How long do you? How long did it take you to do this? We went from that night to like next morning. He didn't go to sleep. So you worked through the night cleaning it up. And how long after did uh, did Bryce come back to the house? Yeah. How long was he gone for? He's gone for a while. Did he say anything about what had happened? Uh, did he help you clean up? Yeah. Once you all had. The house cleaned up. What do you? What's the next thing that happens? What do you do with the stuff? We took it to various dumpsters. Okay, so you hopped in a car. Which car did you hop in? I hopped in the, blue, in the blue one. And where'd you put the stuff? Stuff. What you mean? Where we put the stuff? So the stuff you cleaned up. You put it in. How'd you carry it out of the apartment? 
in the bag. Okay. And then the bags, you put them in the car? Yep, in the trunk. In the trunk area? And one of you all was in the front seat? Where were you? In the front. Okay. And then did somebody sit in the back seat? Yeah, Corey. So where'd you go in the car? And who's driving the car? Bryce for driving the car. All right. Where do you go to? We went to like different dumpsters. It said dumpsters on fire. Why different dumpsters? It's just to spread evidence. So that seemed like it seemed like spreading the evidence was a good idea at the time. Yeah. In the car. So did you end up? So stuff gets dropped off, gets burnt. How was the stuff set on fire? We put some gas in the dumpster, let it on fire. And then drove off? Where'd you go that night? No, I went to Park Hill. And where, what was going on in Park Hill? Where'd you go? Shut up and train. I'm sorry? Yeah, so I was, it was over. So, so, so I was trying to trade shoes. Okay. What, were you wearing the same clothes that you had on earlier in the day? Yeah. And so you're changing out of those clothes? Who's giving you clothes? I know people. And did you end up, did you end up with any items that belonged to either Maurice or Larry at the end of that night? Yeah, I had some shoes and I had a phone. Okay, whose phone did you have? I had Maurice's. And why'd you have Maurice's phone? So I picked it up. Where'd you pick the phone up? At the house. And were you able to use that phone? No. Yeah. What time was it when you were done for the night? When you were back? Was it all all through that Saturday? Was it or all through that day? Was it late afternoon now, or was it nighttime? It's like late afternoon. And did that phone ever ring? Yeah. It did? And who was on it? Different people. I, I would use the phone. I'm calling people. Was, was there anyone related to Maurice or Larry that called you on that number? Yeah, his mama called. And who did she want? She was asking where they was at. What'd you tell her? It was in the stool. And what'd she say to that? She said, I'm calling. Were you, were you worried about what she was going to think at that point? So what'd you do with the phone? She kept, kept using it. And then later on that day, did you get... A visit from somebody? Yeah, U.S. Marshals. And what happened? She got booked. They took me, they, they took me for question. What were you thinking when that happened? She was panicking. And had you, had you not thought about the phone might be traceable? Because if I even know you can do it. You didn't know it? Because how old were you then? 18. Okay. So that night, uh, do you talk to police? No. And do you, do you end up telling them what you've told the jury? No. And do you, have a, do you have a plea agreement with the police that night, or is that something that happens later? It happens later. So you told what happened before you had any sort of deal? Yeah. So 
after you dropped, after you did the cleanup, after you went to the dumpsters, after you set the bags of stuff on fire, what what did you all notice about the car? It had blood in the, in the back seat. And so how was that handled? Cut the back seat up. And who cut the back seat up? Was... What did he do with the back seat after he cut it up? We put it, we put it in the back of somebody's in the back of somebody's garage. Is it somebody you knew? And the person. Is it somebody that he knew? No. I don't have any further questions. You all approach. 